वेलकम बैक यू वाचिंग बिग डील एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वैल्यू अनलॉकिंग एंड इन्वेस्टर एग्जिट प्रोपोजिशंस इन द स्टार्टअप स्पेस नाउ करण वी वर डिस्कसिंग द आईपीओ मार्केट द वैल्यूएशंस आई वांट योर व्यू ऑन द वैल्यूएशन मैट्रिक्स बिकॉज़ वी डिड टेक द एग्जांपल ऑफ मामा अर्थ व्हिच इज अ रीसेंट लिस्टिंग फ्रॉम द स्पेस एंड इट्स अ वैल्यूएशन समथिंग दैट वी कैन नाउ मेक यू नो ड्रॉ एनालिसिस फ्रॉम for the future ipo pipeline from this space and versus the secondary sale so which is the theme which is picking up and how are the valuation matrices working out so sure. uh, sunisha the the good part is that the industry especially on the tech side and most of the ipos that we expect we will see far more on the consumer side of it we will see fewer on the on the b2b you know saas side so on the consumer side the good part is the the conventional industry players are all, there's a lot of listed peers people are looking at uh, ebitda multiples for over 1 to 2 years and the good part about indian public markets is we look at a certain growth profile which is 20 25% onwards we see a healthy uh, rosy profile which is return on capital employed and uh, if you look at a bunch of you know 30 to 40 such large consumer retail listed peers you see you know ev by beta multiples right from 25 to 35x zone and that's how that's how most of the most of the investors are approaching these tech startups obviously they're applying these multiples more on what the stable state of beta of these companies could be in the next uh, 12 to 24 months and then discounting it back so the good part is the discussion is more about now a beta multiples rather than the revenue multiples or gmv multiples which was maybe a scenario you know 2 to 4 years back but that is that has undergone a change and on to a second question on how one should think about the secondaries and the and the and the public market scenarios i think it's a it's a it's a sequencing aspect as i would like to see so in india companies would always take a bit longer uh, you know in their journey to list which means you know per, how a typical uh, vc or a product investor the investment time period that they would assume for for them to see an exit in a company in india it could be a couple of years longer than uh, a say mature market like the us which means that if they are you know 4 to 5 years into their investment journey in a company the secondaries are an interesting uh, interesting option for them to sell part or large portions or even full secondary stake to another Uh, mm. private equity or a secondary focus fund so that rollover you know ensures that there's not too much of pressure on the cap table when the company looks to list yes. and the fresh pair of investors who are there in the next phase of journey for the next 3 to 5 years so we see secondary is a good kind of a product for for investors to explore and have an interim uh, return option for them as mm. compared to pegging pegging hopes on a long term ipo journey so it's a combination of both that should solve the overall uh, you know uh, i would say liquidity requirements of the investors a very important point uh, made uh, by you there uh, karan because as from what i have understood uh, the private equity industry which is uh, much more progressed in terms of understanding the public market the ipo as well as the growth stage companies probably can act as a buffer uh, for even the ipo preparedness of the companies rahul what's your view on that and how is this trend really picking up for the vcs nisha fortunately in our case we do have a longer time horizon So our funds are typically ten plus two years. Uh, what this means is we can stay with the startups at least from seven to ten years. And if need be, extend that journey as well. Uh, so if if we think that the company can go IPO in let's say twelve fourteen years, also we are perfectly open to staying along with that. Uh, giving or getting some secondary exit has a different motivation. It is less to do with is the company taking too long. It is more to do with providing some liquidity to our own investors. and we actually did that in mamarth also in 2020 i think we took a small stake uh, that we sold but stayed with uh, the company for a larger stake of ours uh, so yes if you are a fund which is much shorter time horizon i think uh, founders should understand when they raise money from those investors that you know in 5 7 years there has to be some exit that needs to be provided uh, in our case fortunately that's not needed all right uh, not in your case but disha coming to you as a founder 
What about the IPO preparedness from the founder community? You, I'm sure, have a conversation with several other entrepreneurs of your uh, type. And uh, how are the change in the view that public market takes on the matrices uh, being accepted? How is that approach being seen? And are founders able to really prepare their companies on those matrices? Um, I think, Shah, I think uh, as Karan and Rahul both have said that, you know, uh, a lot of things have changed in the ecosystem in the last two to three years. Uh, the matrices that we were looking at two, three years back are not something that we were so keenly looking at right now. Of course, you know, growth is important, top line is important, but I think uh, start, uh, founders are also realizing, and I think the overall ecosystem is also realizing this, that if in five to seven years you have you want to go IPO as a company, uh, then there are a few more matrices that you need to look on. And the most important one of them would be, of course, capital efficiency and being EBITDA positive, as you know, Karan was saying, because that's what public markets values the most. And that's the change that we are also seeing across it and i think uh, at zook we have always taken pride in being capital efficient for the very long time and i think that's what that's how we are building our business given isha uh, zook is our life's work and uh, i think we want to take zook uh, IPO in next, you know, maybe five to six years. And uh, now we understand from all the IPOs, which has happened in the last two years, that it does take its own time to prepare for the IPO. And the matrix, like the preparedness might happen two years back from the date of IPO that you want to go. But the whole matrix focus has to start from the very, very beginning, maybe, you know, five, six years before right. when you think. No, right, that's, that's right. Uh, you have to be prepared for right from the beginning. And there are several aspects to it. Uh, uh, in terms of cash generation, EBITDA positive, and also the corporate governance standards. Uh, very quickly, Karan, final word. You said uh, that uh, m &A is not something that is ringing in well in this particular space. Any particular view on that? And uh, do you see a theme picking up even in terms of consolidation, VC-led consolidation? Anything that you see on the horizon? Very quickly. Sure. So, Nisha, we see, you know, uh, a lot more scrutiny, scrutiny on capital deployment of larger companies by their boards as to, you know, uh, where they believe uh, they could be good acquisition targets. I would say uh, market consolidation in terms of equity swaps between companies uh, could increase, uh, you know, uh, marginally over the next, I would say, year or two years. However, very large cash m and exits is something that, you know, we believe in, in some of the key sectors that we track closely, we don't see that as a as a big outcome. Yes, there could be smaller, few hundred million dollars worth of uh, smaller acquisitions that yes. companies could do for cash. But yes. large consolidation would largely be with mergers yes. and largely more equity swaps, less of cash deployment. That's right. Okay, so consolidation could be um, there with share swap. But uh, one thing I wanted to just put across that the public markets want what's the bottom line. And that's been the focus of the public markets. And uh, the startup world has come around and has been um, been on track to uh, profitability when they have to make it to the IPO market. So that's one big change that has really taken place. Thank you so much, Rahul Disha, as well as uh, Karan, for joining us for this uh, interesting conversation. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Big Deal. Thanks so much for tuning in.